Hi guys, welcome back to the Financial Interest YouTube channel. My name's Dan. So in this video, I'm going to cover liquidity ratios and we'll look at the current ratio, the quick ratio and the cash ratio. So let's get on with the video. So liquidity ratios are used to determine a company's ability to pay its short-term liabilities using its short-term assets, or as you'll see it called current assets and current liabilities. And when I talk about current assets and current liabilities in this context, what we're actually looking at is anything from the next 12 months. So current assets is anything that we can turn into cash within the next 12 months and current liabilities is any debts that we owe to be paid within the next 12 months. Beyond that, we're getting into the more longer term assets and liabilities. So let's first take a look at the current ratio. So we can see here that we're taking the current assets divided by the current liabilities. So some examples of current assets would be cash and cash equivalents, marketable securities. You might also see this called short term investments. And then we'll also have accounts receivable. So this is money owed to us for products or services that we've delivered to customers. And then we'll also have inventory, prepaid liabilities, and then there's a few others. And if you think about it, we'll look at the balance sheet, but the actual audit goes from the most liquid to the least liquid as we go down the current assets. And just to give you some context on what would be non-current assets, which we're looking at more long-term assets, you'd be looking at kind of properties, equipment, because obviously if you needed to sell a property or you needed to sell a warehouse, or any equipment that you're using that might take longer than a year to actually be able to realize the cash from that. So with the current ratio, anything that's above one means we have enough current assets to cover our current liabilities. So really the baseline point we should be looking at here is a current ratio of one or above. One to two would be nice, but you also need to kind of be a little bit careful because you might think that a really high current ratio is good, but actually that means that the company might be holding on to too much cash. And that's also a bad thing because they could actually be putting that cash to use in better places making investments in the business or somewhere that's going to earn higher interest. So there's a lot of other different things you need to look at as well with that. And moving on to the quick ratio, this is also known as the acid test ratio. And this is just really taking the current ratio one step further by removing some of the more illiquid assets at the end of that. So there's a couple of different ways we can calculate the quick ratio. It's not actually going to significantly change the result, but it's just one is kind of an additive approach and one's a subtractive approach. So we'll take a look at that now. So we can see the first method is to take cash and cash equivalents, then add marketable securities and accounts receivable, and then divide by the current liabilities. And this is the additive approach. And the second approach is to look at the current assets and then minus the inventory and the prepaid expenses because these are the most illiquid of those assets. And then once again, we're dividing by the current liabilities. And finally, we'll take a look at the cash ratio. So as it sounds, this is literally just taking the cash and cash equivalents, the most liquid assets we can possibly get. So this is the kind of cash that's already there or we can get our hands on really fast. Let's take a look at that now. So this is simply the cash or cash equivalents plus the marketable securities divided by the current liabilities. So if we look at the three all together, then obviously as we go from the current ratio to the quick ratio to the cash ratio, we're going to see a decrease in the ratio as we go from one to the other because we're going from all of the current assets down to purely the cash. So each step will obviously result in a lower ratio. And we'll just go and take a look at an example from Alphabet or Google from their latest 10K filing. We'll look at the balance sheet. So here we are looking at Alphabet or obviously the parent company of Google as it is. And we can see we've got the 2021 and 2020 data and this is showing the current assets. So we can look down here, cash, cash equivalents, marketable securities, and then we're going down to accounts receivable, income taxes, inventory, and other assets. So as I mentioned before, we're going from the most liquid to the least liquid as we go down. And we can see here 188 billion of current assets in total. And then we can scroll down to look at the current liabilities. And we can see the total current liabilities is 64. So we know straight away that they've got the amount to cover their short term liabilities. So now I'm just in macro trends. And I can actually go and look at this is going to show me the picture. Obviously, now we're looking at the current ratio. So we can just go and look at how that performs over time. And we can see it's actually fairly consistent over the years. Uh, we can see the latest one is 
and that's been fairly consistent. It's kind of above three quite a lot here. I'd kind of suggest from this that probably maybe Google is actually struggling to put um, maybe it's got so much cash it's actually struggling to put it to work and then also the quick ratio which is obviously going to be a slightly more conservative version of that let's see here 2.91 and I'll compare these all on an Excel in a few minutes and now we'll go and look at when having a low current ratio or quick ratio is actually going to get you into a lot of trouble and this we saw at the beginning of the pandemic particularly with airline and cruise line stocks so now we'll go and look at Royal Caribbean because that's a little bit more interesting because obviously this was a company with a very low current ratio historically anyway. We can see here going back from 2010, you know, we're looking at 0.27 and it's kind of consistently gone like this. It's got as low as 0.14 there and obviously we see a huge rise here which obviously kind of corresponds with the pandemic and what actually happened is the cruise lines and the airlines had to take on bailouts or take on debt and they took on a huge amount of debt and obviously what the effect of that has is the cash from that debt when they take out a loan will appear in the current assets because it will sit in there as cash and obviously here we can see that the ratio is going uh, up and it's kind of at one point here gone to 1.7 i mean i've not looked into it deeply but i imagine this is just because of the amount of debt that they've taken on and because all of that debt is not going to be due in the first year it's going to be in the long-term liabilities and that's why it's always important to look at the short-term or current liabilities in relation to the long-term liabilities to give a proper context to the information and here we're looking at delta we're probably going to see a similar scenario. Yep, we can see here that it was always kind of the last few years between 0. Point, sort of 0. 0.34, 0. 0.5. And then we've gone here, obviously received a cash injection, whether that's from a government bailout or that's from debt that they've raised or equity they've given away. But whatever way, this is something that will appear as cash, but then will go in the long-term liabilities. So this 1.27 here doesn't mean that the company is actually healthy. You need to always look at the, um, the bigger picture. So we can see here, I've selected a few different companies and I've tried to just match these companies from similar industries. So digital advertising, we've got Meta or Facebook and Alphabet or Google. And we can look at these figures here and you can see that they're fairly comparable. And as I mentioned, you always need to look within your competitors in the industry. And these um, ones we're looking at now, they're actually just the latest one. You'd also need to look over the historical figures as well, like I showed you in macro trends before. But you see these are fairly similar. United Airlines and Delta. And I've also got Costco and Walmart just to kind of look at these. And these are two solid companies as well. And don't kind of get... Um, fooled into thinking that because their quick ratios are kind of 0.5 or less that these are bad companies they actually just kind of really efficiently manage the cash that they've got uh, this is particularly the case with Walmart because they buy in such huge quantities from their suppliers they can actually leverage longer payment terms so they're receiving money from people shopping in their supermarkets but they might have um, like really long payment term cycles with their with their suppliers which might be 90 days and obviously as you'll see each numbers are getting more conservative as we go down and we're looking at purely the cash and now let's just take a look at some of the key points from the video so what we're looking for is the company has enough cash to pay off its current liabilities and that's anything that's owed within the next 12 months and as we've seen the ratios will differ considerably by industry so we always need to compare within industries rather than companies from different sectors and we also need to check the historical ratios of the company to make comparisons with the ratios they've had over time. A high ratio is also not good because it means the company may be holding on to too much cash which is not being put to work elsewhere where it could be generating a higher return. I like to use the current and quick ratio as just a quick screener to indicate what companies are looking healthy. But you always need to check the bigger picture and look at the total liabilities of the company. And the ratios should just be one part of the puzzle. We need to look at the total debt, revenue, profits, free cash flow, return on invested capital, and a lot of other metrics to build a full picture of a business. We'll never look at just the um, liquidity ratios on their own. Everything needs to have context.
So that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like. Also consider subscribing to the channel as well. And you can hit the notification bell to get notified of when I'm releasing new videos. And let me know in the comments below what you think about liquidity ratios. Do you use them a lot? Or do you kind of focus on more of the total liabilities and the total assets? Always interested to know what you've got to say on that. Please leave that in the comments. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.